It's only been around for a little over three years, but in that brief time, AEW has put on some truly violent spectacles. So many, in fact, that it was hard to pick only 10 matches to list as their most brutal ever. It didn't take long for fans to see just how hardcore AEW was willing to go. The first Fighter Fest was AEW's second event ever, and it was headlined by what would become a staple of the promotion, a lights out match. These matches always occur at the end of the show and are unsanctioned bouts that do not count towards the record books. Anything goes. Here, for the first time, we got to see what that would mean in an AEW context. If there were two men on the initial roster that were up to the challenge, it was John Moxley and Joey Janela, who had both competed in incredibly violent matches on the indies. Mox and Janela used the usual tables, ladders, barbed wire, and thumbtacks. Did anyone expect to see a prosthetic leg, though? Fans of John Moxley's pre-WWE days probably did. This was Moxley's first match in the promotion, and he was clearly enjoying the chance to go back to his hardcore roots. He marched to a win after using Janela as a human pincushion, but his victory didn't end the night. Kenny Omega came out and got some revenge for Moxley attacking him at double or nothing, putting him through a table, and even hitting him with an electric guitar from the show's set. This was yet another lights out match. The first of a trilogy of matches Omega and Janela would have, and also their best. It took place on just the second ever episode of AEW Dark, and was a great way of getting fans' attention by offering something that would end up being quite different from the kinds of matches people would soon come to expect from the show. This wasn't a short little undercard squash. This was two wrestlers shooting for the moon, trying to have a top tier bout. This match featured a lot of the same implements of destruction you've come to expect in hardcore matches. Why it stands out enough to make a top 10 though is simple. Two of the craziest bumps in AEW history happen here. The first is Janela being body slammed off the top turnbuckle onto four open chairs all lined up back to back. The second is the finish where Omega hits Janela with a one winged angel on an open chair. It doesn't crumple or break. Individually, each of these spots are crazy enough to steal a show. On this night, they happened within the same minute. The 2019 feud between Moxley and Omega culminated with a lights out match of its own at the first full gear. It was already clear Moxley thrived in this kind of environment, but there was a lot of curiosity about what Omega would do in a style of match he didn't regularly work. He ended up taking to it like a fish to water, mixing in his usual athletic, polished offense with all the plunder fans were quickly coming to expect from AEW gimmick matches. The bar for props got raised again here, with the two men ending up using broken glass, mouse traps, and even a screwdriver. A bed of barbed wire also prominently came into play. It all built up to a finish that featured something most fans had likely rarely seen before. Moxley removed part of the canvas and its protective padding from the ring, resulting in the final sequences being wrestled on the bare wooden planks. Both men took bumps on them, but Omega's crash and burn on a Phoenix Splash looked especially painful. Fans ended up divided over this nearly 40 minute war, but it was certainly an unexpected turn from Omega. I was able to step out of my comfort zone and really challenge myself uh, against John Moxley. Over a year later, the Moxley Omega feud would be reawakened when Omega turned heel on the way to dethroning Moxley as AEW World Champion at Winter Is Coming. At Revolution, we'd get the rematch. To add some excitement, AEW announced it would be their first ever exploding barbed wire death match. The match gimmick had been used in Japan from time to time, with the ring ropes being replaced with barbed wire and explosives set to go off after a countdown expires. In this case, 30 minutes after the start of the match. Once the match was announced, people's imaginations ran wild at how this would top the duo's full gear encounter. The very end of the match was a small, pitiful explosion after Moxley had lost, and it has overshadowed everything that happened before it. It shouldn't. The match came through on everything else. The final bomb was a dud, but the explosions that took place every time Omega and Mox hit the barbed wire, pretty good as was the one that resulted from a little bomb being strapped to a barbed wire bat. This was a match that lived up to both the standard of match quality and the standard of brutality that these two had previously set with each other. It just whiffed on the lamping. The last decade has seen women's wrestling make steady, yet sometimes frustratingly slow progress. 
there are still a ton of milestone moments women's divisions have yet to reach. But on this night, a few more happened. This was just the third Lights Out match in AEW history, but the first on free TV and the first between two women. More importantly, this was the first time women had main evented an AEW event of any significance. Britt Baker and Thunder Rosa earned every bit of that distinction in this match, one that was just as rough and gruesome as what the men put on and as good of a match as anything AEW did that year. Britt and Rosa have wrestled in regular singles matches and they later wrestled in a cage for the title, but they've never had a match that has reached the same heights they hit here. Something about that unforgettable visual of Britt wearing the crimson mask just clicked. It makes sense that one of AEW's most heated feuds peaked with its most violent match. And I felt like this was like the, the opportunity to prove the legitimacy of the division and say that like, no, we do have a dog in this fight. Another great example of how a wild stipulation can elevate a feud comes from Best Friends and Santana and Ortiz. They're two good teams who often work the mid card. They're also more than capable of having good traditional matches, but put them in a parking lot brawl and you get a match that is a career best for both teams. Surrounded by vehicles and onlookers, these four men put on a match unlike anything AEW has seen before or since. Seeing wrestlers bump on car hoods, roofs, and windshields is a very different experience from most wrestling matches. Just those kinds of unique visuals alone would have been enough to make this match memorable. But we also got other weapons too, as well as hard weight blood, covering all the bases of a no disqualification match. Best friends tend to be more comedic, palling around with the likes of Orange Cassidy, who himself got involved in this match. So you might not expect him to be capable of a match that can make this kind of list. You'd be wrong. As part of the MJF Chris Jericho feud, MJF set up multiple labors of Jericho. The self-proclaimed demo god would have to overcome all those labors to finally get to face MJF in a match. The second labor pitted Jericho against the deathmatch king himself, Nick Gage. People couldn't believe it. Gage and Jericho felt like they came from two different wrestling worlds. This wasn't a King Kong vs. Godzilla type of dream match. This was King Kong vs. Well, uh, Chris Jericho. You might not expect Jericho to be up to wrestle a Nick Gage style death match, but he was. He did broken glass spots. He also let Gage cut him up with his beloved pizza cutter, leading to some controversy when a Domino's ad popped up during the picture in picture commercial break. When you order Domino's carry out, get three topping pizzas for $7.99 each and choose Domino's car side delivery. Gage even brought light tubes to AEW. Jericho is a master of adaptation, but to be able to wrestle what was basically a GCW deathmatch and to be willing to take the level of abuse required was impressive, even for him. For most of its runtime, this is a very good no DQ match, but nothing too notable compared to other matches here. Then somewhere along the way, you might wonder why Cody Rhodes is wrestling with a weird clear substance smeared all over his back. Then near the end of the match, you'll see Brandy Rhodes set a table on fire. Then you'll see Cody superplex Andrade El Idolo through it. Then you'll see Cody take the brunt of the fire and the flames linger on his leg for a while. Then you'll get it. Fire is one of the most dangerous things wrestlers occasionally play with. It can be unpredictable and turn very quickly from a fun prop to a real danger. There's a reason why it's used far less in wrestling than things like chairs, ladders, and thumbtacks. After the match, despite taking the precaution of using fire-resistant gel, Cody's back had some significant burns on it. Cody had wanted to give Atlanta fans another indelible memory, and he succeeded. This might be the most underrated match on this list, because it happened on Rampage and doesn't include any stars who have been champions, at least not yet. But this match is as bloody and vicious as any on this list, with barbed wire and tacks both coming into play. It features some truly scary bumps, including a moonsault knee drop and a big suplex onto a chair. It's the type of wrestling match that you watch almost like a horror movie with your eyes half covered. Everything adds up to this being one of the best women's tags in AEW history. Though it's not discussed as much as it should be, it did get some attention, good and bad, in its immediate aftermath. Everyone in this match is talented and in some ways, underappreciated, and this match ended up showing an advantage of hardcore wrestling. In today's wrestling world, great, clean wrestling matches don't stand out as easily because we see them every week. But hardcore ones, 
this violent are rarer and more special. Sometimes the best way to get people to pay attention to you, if only for a minute, is to take extreme measures. If you want the most brutality for your buck, this match, AEW's second annual Blood and Guts, is the one for you. Two teams of six men went to the greatest of lengths to live up to that match name over a whopping 46 minutes. AEW's take on the classic war games featured some deviations from the original version, with wrestlers climbing the closed roof cage as well as weapons entering the mix. The match produced all sorts of incredible visuals, whether it was Claudio Castagnoli giant swinging Chris Jericho on top of the cage, or Angelo Parker hanging upside down from a support beam drenched in his own blood. How you feeling, buddy? Feeling good, feeling good. Why are we doing this? Why are we doing this? Why are we doing this? Honestly, I ask myself that a lot. But one moment clearly stood above the rest, and that's Eddie Kingston throwing Sammy Guevara off the roof of the cage. Thankfully, he was given a somewhat soft landing aided by a crash pad, yet it still made us hold our collective breath. It was a sequel that topped the original, upping the ante in terms of sheer spectacle, action, and yes, blood. John Moxley and Eddie Kingston were naturals for this kind of battle, but even wrestlers you might not expect to thrive, like 2.0 and Wheeler Yuta, ended up doing well. A legitimate leg injury to Santana was the only thing that marred an otherwise amazing night. If you didn't see your pick for the most brutal match in AEW history, like we said, it was tough to pick just 10. Cody Rhodes vs. Dustin Rhodes almost made the list, but we weren't going to go for just bloody. We also left out matches with serious, legitimate injuries, such as Sammy Guevara vs. Matt Hardy or John Moxley vs. Adam Page. That's not the kind of brutality we want to celebrate. Even with qualifiers, we still had to omit a ton of worthy matches. Brody Lee's battles with John Moxley and Cody Rhodes both could have made it, as could Adam Page's Texas Death matches with Lance Archer and Adam Cole, Moxley vs. Eddie Kingston from Full Gear 2020, the insanity of the Cracker Barrel Clash from the first All Out, Anarchy in the Arena, or the original Blood and Guts match. We also left out a host of ladder and cage matches, simply because the competition to make this list was just that 